Okay, so I uh, found some free time, so I decided I would stream another card. I need to pull out one more card. I'm missing Henry Urslinger. Uh, he is going to be in this set at the very back. There he is. Okay, for tonight, um, our first match is going to be Henry Urslinger versus Gorgeous George. Uh, it's Gorgeous George's debut here in our in uh, my universe, so it will be his first match, and he'll be taking on Henry Urslinger, who is basically enhancement talent, so we'll see how that goes. George hopefully will uh, be able to impress everybody with a win. And then we have Hackenschmidt and Steele. So let me uh, grab these guys. Then there is Ray Steele and George Hackenschmidt. Um, no real big rivalry or anything interesting going on there. Just uh, two guys looking to climb the ladder in the promotion. And then we've got Earl Caddick and Joe Stecker. Uh, Caddick and Stecker. Both of these guys are very successful uh, in singles competition. Stecker is a former uh, champion. And so he is looking to sort of reaffirm his position at the top and earn a title shot against the Great Gala. Uh, and Caddick is looking to do the same. And then we've got our semi-main event. This will be for a shot at Mae Young and the, uh, the World's Women's Championship. We've got Mildred Burke versus Clara Mortensen. And yeah, the winner of that will go on to face Mae Young uh, for the NBBW World's Women's Championship. And then in our main event, we've got a European uh, championship match with the champion Paul Pons defend, or defending against Jim Londos. So uh, that should be an interesting one. Pons has been undefeated so far. Uh, I believe he is about... 12 and 0 or something like that. Um, 3 and 0 since establishing the European Heavyweight Championship. So uh, he's got that going on for him. I'm going to put these under here just to make it easy to, uh, to grab them. And this is the main event, so it's going to go at the bottom. Alrighty then. And our opening match is the debut of Gorgeous George with uh, Cherie Dupree. And he will be facing Henry Urslinger. And Urslinger is a 7-4. George is a 6-3. And let's get things underway. And it looks like the Gorgeous one is going to be uh, on the attack first here. As he wins the lockup. And Gorgeous George with a body slam, but that's a power move, and he does have the power. Uh, they are, George has a power advantage, and they are tied in agility. So the body slam is successful, and Henry Urslinger is hurt. And then George follows up that body slam by picking Urslinger up and throwing him into the ropes. Urslinger does have an A ropes rating. So this may not have been the smartest thing that Gorgeous George could have done. Uh, but we will see. And let's put the distractor thing in there. For Cherry Dupree. And into the ropes. And that's a 5A. You and the opponent are clinched near the ropes. You sidestep the opponent and use a quick leg sweep to take him down. Roll on level 2 offense. So Urslinger able to counter... That end will be on the attack now. And Urslinger with a flying mare. And Gorgeous George rolls through, pops right back up, and he is ready to attack Henry Urslinger with a drop kick. And that is going to succeed. They are tied in agility. So Urslinger is going to eat that drop kick, and he is down. 
Earthslinger really took the brunt of that drop kick. And under the couch. So I will have to grab this die here. Of course, it would go under the couch in the most difficult place for me to get to in the entire room. So now we have to pick up the couch. There we go. And re-roll the die. And there we go. And Gorgeous George, gonna throw him out of the ring. And Ursulinger does have a C ring rating, so this is a little less ridiculous of George to do. So George throws him out of the ring. And we've got a C6. You tumble through the ropes to the floor. The opponent holds the ropes open for you to return to the ring and to display a good sportsmanship. Opponent rolls on level 2 offense. So George letting him back in. George is pretty sure of himself here in this encounter. And George with the gorgeous grip now. Applying it on Henry Erslinger, who is down in that gorgeous grip. And now George going to throw him out of the ring one more time. Uh, and that's a 5C out of the ring. Uh, and that's exactly the same outcome. So George holding it open one more time. After pitching Erslinger out, he holds it open and lets him back in. And now George picks him up with that airplane spin. And that is going to hurt Henry Erslinger, who is still reeling. Can't really get any offense in in this match. And George with a snap mare. And that's going to daze Henry Erslinger. And George, he just slaps him and prances around the ring. And Erslinger is dazed once again. And now, Gorgeous George with a headlock takedown. That's a choice B maneuver. So let's see. George applies that headlock and takes him down. And he can either let him back up and try a quick foot sweep or throw him into the turnbuckle. Um, I think we're going to go for the turnbuckle chart. He is a B turnbuckle rating. And that is a 9B into the turnbuckle. Your opponent backs out of the corner and you rush towards them. They use your momentum to deliver an overhead suplex and throw you across the ring. Opponent rolls on level 3 offense. So Gorgeous George sends Henry Erslinger flying across the ring with a beautiful overhead suplex. He pulls the tights, but Erslinger able to kick out. And Erslinger, slow to get to his feet. As Gorgeous George rolls him, or no, no, I'm reading the wrong one. Gorgeous George applies a hammer lock, and that is a choice F maneuver. So he applies that hammer lock. He's got him, he's got him secured, and he can either try to take him down with a single leg or bear hug him from that hammer lock and trip him down. I think he's going to try the bear hug and trip, which is a level three move, and it's going to work on six plus or minus the power. And Henry Erslinger has a plus three power, so it's going to work on nine or better. And George is successful. So Erslinger rolling on level three, and he is down. And Gorgeous George could do some damage here. And instead of doing some damage, George just throws him out of the ring again. Or no, man, I can't read these cards tonight. Got to clean my glasses or something. Uh, that's a figure four leg lock. And that is going to leave Henry Erslinger down. So George works the leg on Henry Erslinger, and he is down. And now George picking him up, and in the middle of picking him up, he small packages him, and once again pulls the tights, and this is a pin on Henry Erslinger. So Erslinger needs to roll five or better to kick out. And he does not do it. Gorgeous George with a successful debut as he... Pulls the tights on Henry Erslinger after rolling him up in a small package. Um, definitely not a sportsmanlike way to win, but it is a win nonetheless for Gorgeous George. So, George going to be your winner. 
as we move on to our second match. I'm going to go and record the results of the first match real quick so that uh, it is entered into my record-keeping software. And George defeated Ursland in a small package. George has zero, and Urslinger has one. And that was a pretty much a squash for gorgeous George's debut. And now we're moving on to our second match of the evening, which is really just trying to get back in the swing of things ever since being injured. Um, he has just not been able to... Uh, to attain the same level of success he was before he was injured. So he's just kind of trying to get back in the swing of it. And Hackenschmidt just trying to climb the ladder. Um, right now he's just kind of playing 500 ball. And uh, so he's looking to do something better than that. And so we're going to start this match. And it looks like Hackenschmidt will be the aggressor as he gets the better in the lockup. And Hackenschmidt going to immediately back steal into the turnbuckle. And that is a 7B turnbuckle. So here we go. Uh, the referee orders a clean break. Rolling on level 2 offense here. And Hackenschmidt with a waist lock suplex. Really um, throwing Ray Steele around right now. And Steele is hurt. And Hackenschmidt with... Oh, sorry. With a half Nelson suplex, he's really suplexing the crap out of Ray Steele. That's a choice B. So let's see what happens after the full Nelson suplex. Uh, after suplexing him, he could try a hip lock or a crotch lift and slam. Uh, it looks like the crotch lift and slam is going to be the smarter move as that uses power and is a level 3. And Ray Steel has a zero power, so that's what we're gonna give it a. That's what we're gonna give a shot to, is the crotch lift and slam, and that's gonna work on eight or better, and it does work. So Steel rolling on level three, and Steel is down after that crotch lift and slam, and George Hackenschmidt uh, with a knee smash, and that's a choice C move. So smashes him with a knee, and he can either go for a front chancery while he's on the ground, or a duck under takedown as he gets back up. And the front chancery looks like it's going to be the better way to go, as that's going to work on a six or less. And so Hackenschmidt going to try the chancery. It is not successful, and Steele comes back. And Ray Steele diving double leg takedown, and that has... Hackenschmidt getting out of the way and kind of stuffing the, the driving takedown of Ray Steele, and Hackenschmidt is on the attack. And Hackenschmidt gonna throw Steele into the turnbuckle one more time, or technically back him into the turnbuckle, I suppose. And that is gonna be an 8 turnbuckle, and he's got a turnbuckle B, so 8B on the turnbuckle chart. Your opponent backs out of the corner. You rush towards them. This is the overhead suplex roll. And so Hackenschmidt going to overhead suplex Steele out of the corner and roll on level 3 offense. And Hackenschmidt with a knee smash once again. And after that knee smash, he's going to try for that front chancery one more time. And this time he gets it. And Steele is rolling on level 2 defense. And Steele is hurt. As George Hackenschmidt still on the attack. And Hackenschmidt with a side suplex. And that's going to daze Ray Steele. As he doesn't stay down long enough on that side suplex for Hackenschmidt to really make good on it. And Sh Steele uh, is going to be treated to some forearm uppercuts by George Hackenschmidt. And that's going to put Ray Steele back down. 
and Hackenschmidt is going to launch a major attack here. And Hackenschmidt locks on that Russian bear hug. Uh, this is uh, a plus one maneuver. So he is going to be... Uh, this is one of the weird ones. It says, roll once for submission. If unsuccessful, add one to the opponent's pin rating. And then roll for pin. So we're going to roll for the submission. He needs to roll four or better to kick out. And he does. And then we're going to roll again, uh, but without the plus one. And so he's got to roll four or better again. And he does. So Ray Steele. Um, and I have a, I asked the Olsons if I'm supposed to add uh, twice. And no. They said just add the one fatigue for that move, even though there's two, um, two rolls for kick out so that that their intention was just that you add it once so that's what i'm going to do and that is going to leave george hackenschmidt on the attack and hackenschmidt with a double leg slam on ray steel and that puts steel down and steel is woozy and now hackenschmidt gonna pitch steel out of the ring uh, he's not going to do that, actually. Hackenschmidt's a pretty good guy in my universe, so he's actually going to roll up. And he will lock on a neck crank. That's an agility move, and Steele actually has the agility, so Ray Steele is going to take over, uh, finally getting some offense in. And Steele going to lock on a toe hold. And that is going to Oh, no, that's a two. So, yeah, that's going to hurt George Hackenschmidt. And Steele, once again... Uh, on the attack here, he switches from the toehold to a leg grapevine. And, or no, a waist lock slam. I'm reading the wrong, <laughs> the wrong offensive section. A waist lock slam. And that is going to put Hackenschmidt down. So Hackenschmidt really slammed hard on that waist lock slam. And George, or George Steele, Ray Steele. Man, I am not doing well tonight. Uh, rolling front face lock. And that's going to leave Hackenschmidt down as Steel got the best of that ha uh, of that front face lock. And now Steel with a gut wrench. And that is a choice D maneuver. So he's going to gut wrench George Hackenschmidt. And let's see where he goes from there. Uh, we got some people in the chat. Hi to Todd Jorschel, uh, the Tournament Master, and Deception, what is it, Decepticon's Cave of Villains. Uh, I know nothing about this game. It looks crazy. My screen name is the bad guy to the Autobots, yeah? Um, yeah, the game is great. Uh, PhilSingerGames.com if you're interested in, in learning more about it. Um, and yeah, Todd, I actually asked the Olsons because I wasn't sure about that thing either because it seemed like you could add uh up to two fatigue tokens on that on that roll so i was like well that i'm not sure that that's the intention so anyway back to the match he did a gut wrench and let's see what he follows up with here uh on hackenschmidt and that's a choice d so he could do the hip lock or the crotch lift and slam uh i think that the hip lock is going to be the smarter move as Hackenschmidt has a negative three power and only a zero agility. So we're going to go for that hip lock, and that's going to work on rolls of eight or less. And that is successful. So Steel nails that hip lock, and that's only a level two move. So Hack is... He rolls through the hip lock and gets up before Steel and takes control. And Hackenschmidt is now in control and he applies a front chancery but steel is able to just kind of slip out of that one and take control himself so back and forth here in this section of the match as ray steel with a hip lock takedown or nope i'm doing it again i'm reading the wrong section <laughs> i don't know why i keep doing that 
Uh, into the turnbuckle on Hack and Schmidt, and Hack and Schmidt has a B turnbuckle rating. Uh, B6 on the vintage charts here. So Steele going to back Hack and Schmidt into the turnbuckle. And the referee orders a clean break. The opponent backs off and you step out of the corner. The opponent steps to the side and grabs a single leg takedown. Opponent rolls on level two. So now Ray Steele grabs that single leg, takes Hackenschmidt down. And Steele applies a toe hold. And that has Hackenschmidt hurt. And Steele with a waist lock slam. And that's going to put Hackenschmidt down. That waist lock slam has been one of his best offensive moves all match. Uh, really done a number on Hackenschmidt the couple of times it's been used. And now Ray Steele with the belly to back lift and slam. That is a plus two finisher for Hackenschmidt here or for Steele on Hackenschmidt. So Hackenschmidt needs a five or better to kick out. And he gets it. And Steele on the attack. And Steele nails that belly to back lift and slam a second time. So now Hackenschmidt needs a six or better to kick out. And he rolls snake eyes. So that does it. George Hackenschmidt is pinned by Ray Steele, uh, who is returning off an injury just a couple of cards ago. And now he is back and back in the winner's circle. So hopefully for him, he can continue that momentum. So... That does it for that match. I'm going to enter it into my record-keeping software real quick before we get to the second match. This is your popcorn break or your bathroom break here. Um, let's see. Steel defeated. Helps if I spell that right. Hackenschmidt via what's that? Belly to back, lift and slam. And fatigue. It appears that Hack and Schmidt had two. Two fatigue. And Steel had one. Is gonna make that a let's see that's three divided by two. I'm gonna make that a one star match. And we move on to our next event, which is Earl Caddick uh, versus Joe Stecker. Two guys that I really hope are in the Trago Spez set that's upcoming, but I am not holding my breath. Thankfully, I do have <laughs> bootlegs of them, but it would be nice to get official cards uh, for both of these guys who are part of the Tragos Thez Hall of Fame, uh, who Phil Singer Games works fairly closely with. So we will get this guy underway. Stecker is a two. Caddick is a two. And here we go. Rolling for initiative. And it appears that Earl Caddick gets the best out of the lockup. And he will be on the attack. And Caddick with a fly with a headlock and armbar. Uh, this is an agility move, and he does have the agility. So that is gonna work. And let's see, that is gonna hurt Joe Stecker. Not a good start for Stecker here. And now into the turnbuckle goes Stecker. Uh, he's got B's all around on his ratings, so. We've got a B8 into the turnbuckle, and B8. Your opponent backs out of the corner, and you rush towards them. This is the overhead suplex roll. Uh, so Caddick suplexing Stecker all across the ring. Um, and we are going to see Stecker. He is rolling on level 3. Or nope, Caddick is rolling on level 3. Let's see this go here. And we've got Grapevine and Crossface 3, and that's going to leave Stecker down. 
Uh, Stecker would have the ability to leave the ring if this wasn't so early in the universe's... Since I'm only in the, what is it, the mid-30s, uh, guys weren't really rolling out of the ring a ton at that point, especially if they were good guys. So I don't allow anybody to roll out of the ring unless they've got an A ring rating uh, until at least the late 1930s or early 1940s. So the basic, the leave mechanic is basically uh, moot for most cards. So that's a level 3 attack here for Earl Caddick. And he rolls the head scissors and wrist lock, which is a zero finisher. So three or better will kick out. And he rolls snake eyes. So Earl Caddick quickly defeats Joe Stecker. Uh, gonna enter that information real quick. So Caddick defeated Stecker. Uh, what's the move called? Head scissors and wrist lock. Fatigue. And Caddick is at zero. And Stecker is at one. Uh, that was also a squash, which is not what I would have expected out of that match. Uh, Stecker has been one of the most successful wrestlers in my universe so that, i agree i i'm a big fan of the the pioneer era stuff uh a lot a lot more than the 80s stuff so the pie like the anything like 60s 50s 40s 30s or be, you know earlier that's the stuff that gets me excited i know that most people are excited by the 80s stuff but uh yeah for me it's definitely the earlier the earlier cards get me excited. That's all. I'm also hoping for Penny Banner in this one. Uh, so this is Mildred Burke and Clara Mortensen. The winner will receive a uh, NBBW World's Women's Championship match. Um, Burke is fairly new. She made her debut a couple of cards ago and has been uh, very successful so far. Mortensen has been around for quite a while now. Uh, got several years of experience on Mildred Burke, uh, but has kind of been a mixed bag. Uh, she is a former champion, but she has recently lost that to Mae Young. And here we go. We're setting both these ladies up, 5-2 for both ladies, and we're going to roll for initiative. And it looks like Clara Mortensen is going to get the best out of the lockup here. And Mortensen, with a, bag, with a big back body drop that's an agility move. Uh, they are tied for agility, so that is going to work. And Burke hits the mat and his pops right back up and gets in the face of Clara Mortensen. Burke on the attack. Uh, Burke with a suplex. That is going to really put Mortensen down. She is... Really not able to keep up with Mildred Burke, apparently. And Burke with a jumping knee. This is a choice E. So Burke clubs her with the knee here. And now can either try a rolling knee bar or a forearm uppercut. Um, let's see. The power is plus one. So I think we are going to go with the uh, forearm uppercut. Because otherwise we'd have to contend with a negative two agility. Uh, so forearm uppercut is going to work on nine or better, and it is successful. So now Clara Mortensen rolling on level two, and she is down. That forearm uppercut really rocked her world here, and Mildred Burke on the attack. And now Burke with a crooked head scissors, and Mortensen is hurt. And Burke... Applies that hammer lock. Unfortunately, Mortensen able to slip out of that one. And Mortensen with a fireman's carry takedown. And that is a power move, and she does not have the power. So Burke back on the attack here after slipping out of that fireman's carry with ease. And we've got 
A grinding face lock too. This is a choice F for Mildred Burke. So she applies that grinding face lock and let's see where she goes from here. Ah, she could do a single leg or a bear hug and trip. And the bear hug and trip is definitely the smarter move in this situation as that's a power move and she's got a plus one power. So the bear hug and trip is going to work on seven or better. And Burke can't get it. Mortensen able to counter the uh, bear hug and trip. And Burke going to get pushed back into the ropes by Clara Mortensen. Uh, she has an A ropes rating though, so this may not be may not be such a great idea. And she rolls an 8. So let's see what A8 is. The opponent backs into the ropes. And you both break clean to the applause of the crowd. Roll again for initiative. The winner rolls on level 2 offense. And it is Burke who wins the initiative roll. Gets the better of the lockup. And now Burke with a suplex. That's going to hurt Clara Mortensen. And now Burke. A forearm uppercut. Big one. And this is going to put her down for the cover. Mildred Burke with that big forearm uppercut has Clara Mortensen down and pinned. Uh, she needs a three or better to kick out. And she just barely gets it. She rolls a four. So Burke on the attack here. And Mildred Burke with a backbreaker. Three add one. And we've got another pin. So now Clara Mortensen needs five or better to kick out. And she gets it. So Burke continues her assault here. And Burke with a crook head scissors. And that is hurting Clara Mortensen. And Mortensen uh, put into an arm ringer by Mildred Burke. Mm -hmm. And that is going to put Mortensen down one more time. And now, Mildred Burke locks in that full Nelson. And Mortensen, still down. She went from arm ringer to full Nelson. Really controlling Clara Mortensen here. And now, jumping knee. And this is a choice E. And here we go. Forearm uppercut is not successful. So Mortensen takes over on level 2. And she nails a head scissors on Mildred Burke. And that is going to hurt Burke. Mortensen hoping to really get some offense going here. But we'll see. A headlock throw from Clara Mortensen. And that's going to hurt Mildred Burke as well. So a little bit of a good run here. And now Clara Mortensen resorting to some sketchy tactics as a hair pull takedown dazes Mildred Burke. And now Mortensen going to throw Burke into the turnbuckle. And Burke has an A turnbuckle rating, so... But she rolls a 9, so that's not as bad as it could have been. A9. Uh, the referee orders a clean break. The opponent backs off and you step out of the corner. The opponent steps to the side and grabs an outside single leg. Opponent rolls on level 2 offense, so now Mortensen on level 2 here. And she rolls into the ropes. And Burke's, hey, she has an A ropes rating, so I think she's going to roll up. And here we go. Back body drop, agility move. She does have the, they have equal agility, so that is going to work. And that's going to hurt Mildred Burke. And Clara Mortensen. I'm choking her on the ropes here. Uh, that's definitely not sportsmanlike or sports ladylike. And Burke is going to roll her pin after being choked on the ropes by Clara Mortensen. Burke needs three or better to kick out, and she does. And Mortensen on the attack here. And Mortensen with a big body slam, and that's going to hurt Mildred Burke. And now Mortensen... Pulls the hair one more time, and that's going to daze Mildred Burke again. And Mortensen attempts a back heel trip, but Burke deftly avoids it and takes control of the match. 
and Mildred Burke grinding face lock applied and let's see where she goes from there choice F uh, single leg takedown or bear hug and trip I think she's going to try that bear hug and trip uh, that's going to work on seven or better and it is successful and that's going to leave Clara Mortensen rolling on level three defense and that is a four so she is hurt And Mildred Burke with a hammer lock. But once again, Clara Mortensen definitely avoids that. And Mortensen. Fireman's carry takeover. This is a power move, and she does not have the power, so Burke able to counter. And Mildred Burke into the ropes. Uh, she has a B ropes rating, so we're gonna see whatever this where this goes. That is a B11. You and the opponent are locked in a clinch near the ropes. The opponent locks in an underhook and throws you hard to the mat. Opponent rolls on level 3 offense. So Burke throwing Mortensen hard to the mat with the underhook. And then she nails her with a jumping knee. And she's going to try choice. E and she gets it. And Mortensen rolling on level 2 defense here. And that uppercut dazes Clara Mortensen. And she has got, let's see, dazed. So we're on level one offense here. A body scissors on Clara Mortensen. And that is going to work, even though it's a power move, because Burke has the power advantage here. And Mortensen is dazed. And here we see Burke keeping those body scissors applied and really working them this time. Uh... Still, to no avail, just dazing Clara Mortensen. She can't really get much leverage on those body scissors. And she switches to a single leg takedown. And that is slightly more successful as Mortensen is hurt by that takedown. And she goes back to the ropes here. And this is a B ropes roll. And B11. I believe that is the underhook again. It sure is. So Mildred Burke once again grabbing that underhook and throwing her hard to the mat. Mortensen in trouble here as Mildred Burke hits that backbreaker. Three add one. And Mortensen rolled her pin. So we're going to see a pinfall here after the backbreaker. Mortensen needs a seven or better to kick out. And she gets it with a roll of ten. Now Burke on the attack one more time. And Burke, uh, she's going to throw her out of the ring. She's got a C ring rating. So they're going to back towards the ropes and something's going to happen that sends one of them out of the ring. Uh, C5. C5. You tumble through the ropes to the floor. The opponent holds the ropes open for you to return to the ring and is in a display of good sportsmanship. Uh, opponent rolls on level 2 offense. So Burke holding the ropes open so Mortensen can re-enter the ring. And she is on level 2. And into the ropes one more time goes Clara Mortensen. And B4. That is definitely not a... Uh, Todd is asking, what's the mechanic on the Mortensen card? It's hard to read on the screen. So she's got a specific thing uh, to adjust her stats when she faces men. Uh, she was one of like the pioneers of intergender wrestling. And so uh, her stats get better or worse, depending on which stat you're talking about, uh, depending on whether she's facing a man or a woman. Uh, the bold stats are, are used when she's facing men. Uh, so that was a B5, or B4. You and your opponent are clinched near the ropes. You sidestep the opponent and use a quick leg sweep to take the opponent down. Roll on level 2 offense. So Mortensen finally getting some, uh, some offense back here. And Mortensen with... Now Mortensen is going to push Burke into the ropes... 
And Burke has an A ropes rating, A10. Um, you and the opponent break clean as the opponent backs up. You step towards the opponent, and she grabs you with a hair pull. And Burke says, no. Get your hands out of my hair. And she is on the attack. And Burke with a twisting ankle lock. Uh, this is an agility move, and they have equal agility, so it is going to work. And now Mortensen is dazed. And Burke, once again, continues to apply the pressure on that twisting ankle lock. And this is going to hurt Clara Mortensen. And Burke, another grinding face lock. Choice E. So another choice move. So she applies that grinding face lock, and she's going to nail that uh, forearm uppercut. It's going to work on nine or better. And she does not. So Mortensen once again takes control, and Mortensen with a head, she tries that hair pull takedown and dazes Mildred Burke. And now, uh, Clara Mortensen applying the overhead wrist lock, and that's going to hurt Mildred Burke. And Mortensen, uh, she's into the ropes. And this is a six. So, A6. Uh, this is an initiative roll, so they break clean, and they roll again for initiative. And they tie. And uh, the house rule is that when wrestlers tie on an initiative roll, the offensive level goes up one, and they roll again. So, since they would normally be starting... And Mildred Burke wins the, the lockup, and she's on level three offense here. And Burke with a backbreaker add one... And then <laughs> Clara Mortensen rolls her pin on that backbreaker. That seems to be happening all night. Uh, she needs a nine or better to win this, or to kick out of this. And she does not get it. So finally, uh, Mildred Burke has won the match. She will be going on in a card or two to face uh, Mae Young for the NBBW World's Women's Championship. Um, and... I am going to enter that into the record keeping software here and I will be right back with you after that uh, with the main event. So we just saw Burke and I hope my fingers are in the right place. Burke defeated Mortensen. Uh, Burke had one, and Mortensen, she was way up there, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that would make that a three-star match. These two ladies, that was a fairly good one. And this is your main event. Uh, we've got Paul Pons from uh, Sam Luptak Jr.'s excellent set. Um, and he will be facing Jim Londos from the Trago, the, the first Tragos This set. Uh, Londos, one of my favorite cards to use from that set. Uh, Londos is a 4-1. Paul Pons is a 5-2. Uh, Pons, almost a foot taller and about 60 pounds heavier than Londos. But Londos is a tough, tough man. So let's see how this plays out. It is for the European Heavyweight Championship. And they tie on the initiative roll. So they will be starting on level 2. And it's Londos who gets the better of it. Londos applies a grinding armbar, and that is going to put Paul Pons down immediately. And now Londos, with the Fireman's Carry Slam, three add one. So we're going to add one. 
ending his title there. And Londos on the attack. And Londos once again with that fireman's carry slam. Three and one. And that is going to hurt uh, Paul Pons right here. And since we've done three uh, fatigue tokens, uh, Londos' finisher becomes the airplane spin plus two instead of the Boston Crab at this point. And he's got a reverse toe hold on Paul Pons, uh, but Pons able to slip out and counter the move. Pons coming back with a run level one. That's a hip toss, and it's a it's an agility move, and that's not going to work. Londos definitely has the agility advantage here, and Londos with a grinding armbar three. And that is going to be in the center of the ring. Pons might have to submit here. He's going to have to fight his way out of this. A six or better. And he does not do it. And that is going to end our card tonight with a new European heavyweight champion as Jim Londos upsets or defeats, depending on how you want to look at it, Paul Pons. Um, so that's it for us tonight. Uh, thank you all for watching. I will be back next Thursday, probably. Uh, like I said uh, last night, I'm trying to stream on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, I may stream again other nights of the week if, uh, like tonight, something comes up with my wife and she gets called into work. And so, you know, there's no chance for family time or anything. Um, otherwise... I will see you next uh, next Thursday, and we'll do some more wrestling. All right, you guys take care. Thanks for watching.